What about those that say you can be a good technician without necessarily being a good fighter? Um, think about that. That doesn't make any sense. How can you be a good technician if you can't fight? It doesn't make sense. You don't say, hey, that guy is a good boxing technician, but when he spars, he just gets mauled every time. Or that wrestler is a good technician, but he, his takedowns suck. Or that Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy is a good technician, but he can't roll. Now, if you said that, you'd come across being crazy. But people say that about JKD and about traditional martial arts all the time. And it's another in a long line of myths. Now, that doesn't mean that some people aren't much better coaches than they are fighters and that some people aren't much better fighters and competitors than they are coaches. That's absolutely true. Because passing the material on, um, that's a whole different skill set. And it doesn't mean that someone may have been a great athlete and a great competitor and they've aged or they've slowed down or they're out of shape. But you can still see, even when somebody's older or they're injured or they're out of shape, you can still see that they have game. They're still going to have some level of game. You know, they may not be a competitive athlete anymore, but they have that level of skill. You know, it's obvious in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because even if the person's 55 years old, usually they still roll a little bit. And they may not be able to hold their own anymore against a 22-year-old uh, young black belt, but I've never met a, a legitimate Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, even one that was in his 50s, that couldn't roll and, and present some game. And so it is true you can be a tough fighter without being technical, uh, using aggression, size, explosiveness, strength, and those kind of things. But you can't be a good technician or be considered technical without being able to fight. It's impossible. It's similar to when people tell me they think they uh, that I have taken the art out of martial arts when I advocate this approach, which I think is backwards, but people do say that. They'll say, well, when you talk just about aliveness, you take the art out of martial arts, and, and it's only about fighting with you then. And, I, and my answer to them is, art of what? You know, the art is in the performance. The art is in the doing. The, the process and the doing of the activity itself, that's the art. It's the sharing and the experience of training. If you train in basics, won't you be only training for the short-term objective of performance? Uh, no. The thing you have to remember is there's no such thing as advanced technique in fighting. In functional martial arts, there's no such thing as advanced technique. If somebody says there's beginning, intermediate, and advanced technique, then essentially what they're telling you uh, is they train, they're either ignorant or they're training in a fantasy-based martial arts system. Because in a live functional martial arts, there's only fundamentals, only basics. There's no advanced technique. The same armbar Hicks and Gracie uses is the same armbar a white belt or a blue belt uses that's been training for the first month. The same triangle choke, the same elbow escape. The difference between the advanced technique of, of Hickson and a beginner technique is simply the timing, the tightness, the efficiency of that movement itself. Uh, same holds true for wrestling. You know, The same double leg that a six-year-old is taught in a peewee wrestling class, it's the same double leg basics, the fundamentals of a level change and penetration step and those kind of things that the experts use. You know, that the, that the top level guys at the Olympic level uh, training center in Colorado, that's what they're doing. You know, in judo, experts that have spent an, a lifetime in that art usually perfect one or two basic throws. Yet those are the same throws that they'll use in competition after they've been training for 15, 20 years and reached the highest level of competition in judo that people tend to learn in the first six months of training judo, a brand new beginner. You know, Mike Tyson doesn't throw an advanced left hook. He just throws it much better than I do and much harder than I do. So in a functional martial art, fundamentals is done really well. That's the definition of advanced technique. Fundamentals done really well. If all you have is basics, what can you offer others? And the answer is everything. You don't believe in throwing a new person in over their head and having them spar in the first few months of training. Absolutely no problem. Again, a live training doesn't mean sparring. You can train 100% alive and actually develop a game and rarely, if ever, spar full on or even that often. You know, we never suggest throwing people right into sparring. That's not what aliveness is about. 